What I hear is the sound of pencils to the right and left of me. And we're now going to find out what they've been coming up with. We'll follow the same order for the rebuttals. Uh, Peacock, Vickers, Ridpath, and Kaplan. Five minutes each, uh, led off by Dr. Peacock. Well, I would need five hours to even comment on the number of absolutely fantastic charges made without any content or foundation. And I want to... You're taking my five minutes away from me. Don't applaud, please. You're taking away precious seconds here. <laughs> I want to make a few more points. I'm going to try to stay on the topic of the debate, which is morality and not Central America. <laughs> there is no justification for egalitarianism in morality, nor did our opponents offer any. There is no reason why every man should be equal to every other in anything except equality before the law. People differ in their intelligence, in their morality, in their honesty, in their conscientiousness. And if you talk about social justice, as one of them did, justice consists of gaining what you have earned by your own efforts, not in an equality which requires somebody else's production to be taken from him and uh, given to you when you didn't earn it. Uh, with regard to the uh, claim that uh, we are concerned with property rather than people, we deny such a dichotomy. People cannot exist without property. They're not ghosts. A system which preserves human freedom has to preserve the right to the physical goods that you yourself have produced. Otherwise, you can be free in heaven, but on this earth, you have to take orders from the government. So if you're talking about freedom, that has to include the freedom to own property. And that means private property. If I have to get the consensus of the people in this room, let alone of the whole country's government, before I can act, I am a slave. And any communal ownership of property necessarily means the negation of all rights. It means dictatorship, and it is of absolutely no difference whether it's achieved by majority rule or by a minority coup. If I am not in the majority that voted, once they establish this system, I am just as much enslaved D doesn't make any difference how many people voted for that government. So I don't even recognize such a phenomenon as democratic socialism. Once it's socialism, that's the end of anybody's power except uh, the power of the government. Uh, there's many misrepresentations of our view. Our opponents seem to confuse us with the moral majority uh, in the United States. Um, we do not advocate governmental interference in abortion. We do not advocate governmental censorship of pornography, although apparently one of the opponents seems to suggest that she is in favor of that. We do not advocate, we are not, quote, conservatives in the sense of we want government control of the mind. We want government out only for the purpose of protecting individual rights as defined by Dr. Ridpath. So don't confuse us with Jerry Falwell, please. <laughs> As to the question, uh, the lucky few versus the many who are dispossessed and the constant idea that capitalism is a system of exploitation, that is nonsense. Wealth has to be created. It doesn't ex grow on trees and there's a limitless amount. One person's creation is not taken from another. It is a Marxist myth that you get rich at the expense of the poor. If they're poor, how did you get the money from them to begin with. Uh, one of my, I'm just making these scatter shots because I need 12 hours to just to make a dent on how many falsehoods you heard. Uh, one of my opponents interchangeably equated cooperation and commitment to the community. Now, commitment to the community is a very dangerous thing. Is that the end, or I have a minute? <laughs> Commitment to the community is what any dictator advocates, because the question immediately becomes, who is the voice of the community? The community doesn't speak with one voice unless you have Adolf Hitler or his equivalent. Commitment to the community means obedience to the Fuhrer. A freedom means individualism. It means you are committed to your own life, and you are not a serf of the community. That is an entirely different thing from cooperation, which term she used. Cooperation is peaceful human agreement to do something together. 
The difference between cooperation under capitalism and under socialism is under capitalism, if you don't want to cooperate, you go your own way. Under socialism, you have a gun held to your head. That is what the difference is, because that's what the function of government is. As far as William Buckley is concerned, please do not confuse us with that entity. Thank you.